Building is one part of the process. We also need to run our unit tests, which is just as important as building. Bazel supports running tests out of the box. For this to work, we need to define our testing targets. As mentioned in an earlier episode, our iOS version of the app has a few tests in it. Let's put these tests to work. When we run our tests, the command line will inform you if the tests passed or not. If you want additional information about the tests, you can look in the test logs directory that provides more information about the tests itself. One of the great things about Bazel unit testing is that Bazel will cache the build results, whereas another build system will rerun all of your tests every single time, Bazel will be able to determine which tests need to be rerun based on the affected target. So you may have a project with a thousand tests, but the affected target has only a hundred tests. This means Bazel will run just those 100 tests, whereas another system would run the entire lot of them. Over time, that saved time will compound to hundreds of hours of saved development time. To get started, open up your project in progress. Open up your iOS build file. We're going to define two additional targets. A Swift library will hold our compiled tests, after which we'll create a unit test target. We'll start with the Swift library. Add the following. We'll give it a name and pass in some tests. We'll set the visibility to private since this is a support target. Now our tests are testing our application code. This means we need to create a dependency to our source's target. Finally, we need to define a module name. In this case, this is our bullseye tests. Now if we switch over to Xcode and open our tests, we'll see that we import a bullseye module. We need to define this in our build target. Back in our build file, update the source's target to the following. Okay, we set up our target to compile our tests. We need to create an iOS unit test target. We don't have access to the iOS unit test, so we need to import it. Now let's add the following. We'll give it a name iOS tests and set up a dependency. We'll add our minimum OS version. The test host sets the context, which in this case is an iOS application. We'll also set the platform type to be iOS and set the visibility to be public. And that's it. Now it's time to run our tests. First, let's build our targets. Now let's run them. Remember, you don't have to build every single time. You can just run them from the command line and it will automatically do the build for you. Notice we use the test command. It takes a while, but the tests will run. In our case, our tests failed. Let's drill down in the test log folder. Keep going until you run into outputs.zip. Unzip the file and you'll see it produces an XC result file. Double click on it and you'll be able to see the results in Xcode. Here we are informed why the test failed. It turns out the test itself was bugged since there was no way for the asset to be 195. Change it to 95. Return back to your command line, rerun your tests. And now it passes. Well done.